In complex applications, a business transaction can span multiple JVMs. Profiling such a business transaction represents a challenge. If you profile the client side, how can you resolve what happens on the remote side? JProfiler has a feature called Remote Request Tracking that helps you cross the boundaries between profiled JVMs. Let's jump right into the middle of an example. I'm going to start a demo server that handles web service and RMI requests. Now I need a new window. Let me position that conveniently. In this window I open a demo client that generates a couple of web service and RMI requests. And now I have two JProfiler windows with two profile JVMs that have already communicated with each other. Notice the VM ID in the status bar. JProfiler assigns VM IDs that are consistent as long as JProfiler is open. The server here has been assigned VM ID number one. The client, let's check, is VM ID number two. Let's check the call tree of the client. The client is actually derived from the demo server that ships with JProfiler. It simulates a servlet container that handles HTTP requests and in response to those requests it performs some work including making web service calls and RMI calls. And here you can see these specially flagged remote calls for web services and for RMI calls. JProfiler knows how to translate these generated proxy class names into the actual names of the remote interfaces so you can understand what's being done here. And in addition, there are these hyperlinks here that will take you to the remote execution sites in the other JVM. JProfiler does not track remote calls by default. You have to enable request tracking for a session. The toolbar here, there's the change tracking button which will show you the request tracking settings dialog. The top of that dialog you can see the local tracking types for inter-thread communication and at the bottom there are the remote request tracking types that have been added in JProfiler 8. Currently JProfiler supports remote request tracking for RMI, remote EJBs and for web services. So let's now click on the hyperlink for the call site with ID number 10. JProfiler will activate the other window, select the thread that has actually handled the remote request. You can see here this is from a pool of threads that handles web service requests and highlight the special container node of the execution site. The main benefit of remote request tracking is that you can see the profiled business transaction in isolation. If you did not have remote request tracking, you would see a cumulated call tree of all the requests that the server has handled. In a real-world application, this would make it very difficult to analyze a particular use case. Let's analyze the node of the execution site a little more in detail. Each execution site is associated with exactly one call site. In this case, it's the call site with ID number 10. That's where we started from. It also shows us the ID of the remote VM number two in this case. And if we open the execution site, it will show us the call tree for all the requests that came from that call site. The execution site node also has a hyperlink that will take us back to the call site. Note that just like execution sites, call sites are associated with a particular thread. So in this case, JProfiler has switched to the thread that actually contains the call site with ID number 10. A great way to experiment with request tracking is to start the demo server session that ships with JProfiler. It's one of the predefined sessions that are available after you install JProfiler. It does everything in a single VM, so you work only with a single JProfiler window, but otherwise it's equivalent to the multi-VM case. 